Hey guys, it's time for another DIY from Dave Stewart on metal buildings, of course. So, are metal buildings all alike? Is it better to go with an economy building or a cheaper building than maybe a more expensive, what some would call a red iron, you know, heavily engineered building? Well, stay tuned and you can find out. typical, really economic, really uh, inexpensive building. It's a good building. I mean, it, it meets all the requirements and so forth. Uh, and for a do-it-yourselfer, this would be fine. There's nothing wrong with it. However, if you decide that you want someone else to put it up for you, get ready for a shock because the, usually the cheaper and less fabricated type buildings, you have to do a lot of field fabrication. And out here in the field, everything costs money. I mean, everything is time is money. So what happens is you get little braces up in the rafters that take 13 screws on each side. Not to mention the brace that they give you is just a stock straight piece of metal with curled ends. It's a C channel but you have to notch it and cut it and relieve it and, to make it fit. And of course it's uh, custom uh, fit every time. Now they do punch holes in them so that you know where to cut it. Uh, yeah, okay. But anyway, so with um, red iron buildings, you typically get a lot of the clips are welded on, all the purlings and girts already have the holes drilled in them. You just lift them into place, drop the bolts in and move on to the next thing. Versus this type of building, everything has to be laid out. You get a column that has nothing on it, so you have to measure up from the ground or what the bottom of the column would be and mark it so that you can go along and uh, actually tech screw the Z purlings or Z, excuse me, the Z uh, girts in uh, at each location. So, and typically on these, there's like four screws per connection. Plus you've got the situation where they overlap. So you've got to do a fifth screw, kind of out of the way to help uh, hold the piece up while you put the other piece in. Okay, so another issue, you know, if you're doing it yourself, is, you know, customer service and understanding what you're buying and all that. So. This particular company, MS Impact, I guess, is the ones who actually did the engineering uh, to do the cut list uh, for the pieces and parts. And they did it for a company called Cold Rolled Steel Buildings. Now, one of the big things about uh, companies is their reputation and how well they handle situations and lead the customer down the right path rather than just telling the customer what they want to hear. Customer thinks they're getting one thing, something else shows up at the job. And that's one of the things that I find happens all the time. Customer buys the building, we, we come out to put it up, and he, he says, oh, well, I thought I had this, and oh, I had, thought I had that. Quick note, here's a prime example of where the customer thought they were getting one thing and got something else. This is a four inch purling roof assembly and they ordered or was told that they were getting R30 insulation. Now you know R30 requires almost 10 inches of space. So how are you gonna do that in four inches? So you really gotta make sure you know what you're getting and make sure that the you know, all the dimensions, everything, if you're doing something custom, like a bunch of windows or transverse uh, walls inside or even liner panel, like this one has liner panel. Uh, make sure that you, you understand clearly on the drawings uh, what you're getting because one of the things that they do is when they, before they release these buildings for fab, they make you sign a little piece of paper that says, yes, everything's correct and that's the way I want it. 
So if you're not real well versed in this, you have just took all responsibility for how it was designed here and it may not be what you wanted because you didn't quite understand it. So that's one of the things. I always say get a, uh, an erector involved, uh, especially one that's done that particular building before or, or you know, or someone that's well versed in a lot like my, I'm, I'm well versed in probably the, the top five uh, red iron buildings but I've, over the years, I've done probably 30, 40 different types of manufacturers from small hole in the walls to, you know, big, massive steel structures that span 120 feet, you know, at any given point. So anyway, uh, also, back to the putting these buildings together and the labor intensiveness. I'm going to show you a couple of pictures. Uh, these uh, do come with bolts in the main haunch, what we call the haunch connection pre-punched and that's about it and you slip a plate in and bolt it up but there's all the bracing and, and um, uh, uh, knee bracing that's in this particular building you have to drill three holes on each end plus you have to custom cut the piece and it's in there in this particular building there's 144 bolts that you just have to drill from scratch you have to come up with your own pattern you know so there's a lot of stuff that you have to do uh, yourself to um, make this kind of building come together. Now, I knew what this building was when I started talking to the client, but the client also started asking me, well, why is this building so much more expensive? Because he was getting prices for, you know, like you call a, a metal building guy and you, you say, hey, I got a, you know, a 30 by 40. He gives you a, a square foot price, but Usually a good erector will say, well, what's the brand? What type is it? You know, that kind of thing. Get, get some information. Plus finding out the zip code in the area so that you know if there's snow loads, you know, if there's uh, seismic uh, loads, certain things that change the design to make it maybe either more difficult or easier to, to erect. Anyway, that's uh, just one of the things that I wanted to bring up. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next one.